Welcome to question 8 of the 2019 Mathematical Methods Exam 1 for the Northern Hemisphere. In this video we will be looking at the solution for this question. A reminder that this video is in no way endorsed by VCAR. For question 8 we're told that a fair standard die is rolled 50 times. And W is to be the random variable with a binomial distribution that represents the number of times that a face with a 6 on it appears on the uppermost side. For part A, we want to write down an expression for the probability of W equaling K, where K is some integer between 0 and 50. So the first thing that we can write down is that W is distributed as the binomial distribution with N is 50, and the probability of success is 1 on 6, because there's one face with a 6 represented on it. Therefore, the probability that capital W is equal to K is equal to 50, choose k successes, multiplied by the probability of success, which is one on six, raised to the power of k, which is the number of successes, and then we multiply that by one minus one on six, which is five divided by six, and that's going to be raised to the power of the number of failures, which in this case is going to be 50 subtract k. So if there's k successes, there's 50 minus k failures. So that is the answer to part A of this question. From the examiner's report, we can see that they got a similar answer to us, with the only difference being this is another way of representing 50 choose K. So both of those answers would be acceptable. For part B, we're asked to show that the probability of W equaling K plus one divided by the probability of W equals K is equal to the fraction 50 minus K divided by five times k plus one. So before we go too far into this question, I just wanna write down a formula that we're going to be using. And that is that n choose r is equal to n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial. And we'll need to use this to complete this show that question. And the reason why we'll need it is because we need to know what 50 choose k is equal to so if I write that out, that will be 50 factorial, applying the formula above, divided by k factorial, and then multiplied by 50 minus k factorial. Similarly, because we want the probability that w equals k plus one, we're also going to need to know what 50 choose k plus one is equal to. So following this formula, we would have 50 factorial on the top line, and then on the bottom line, we'd have k plus one factorial, and then we would have 50 minus k plus one, but that would actually turn into minus k minus one if I expanded that bracket out. So this is an expression for 50 choose k plus one. And we're going to use both of these to now show what is required in this question. So if we start with the top line of the fraction, we have the probability that w is equal to k plus one. And Thinking back to what we did in part A, we're just going to apply a similar process to finding that probability, which is gonna form the top line of the fraction. So that's going to equal 50 choose K plus one, which we already worked out an algebraic expression for that. So that's going to be 50 factorial divided by, and then just so we can keep track of what's going on here, I'm going to color code some of these terms. So I'm gonna put the K plus one in green, and then in orange, I'm going to have the 50 take k take one factorial. And then the other thing that will happen here is we'll have one on six, which is the probability of success raised to the number of successes, which is k plus one. And then we would have five on six, which is the probability of failure to the power of 50 minus k plus one. But again, that turns into minus k minus one. And then we need to divide that by the probability that W is equal to K. So that means we need to divide all of this by a similar expression that represents the probability that W equals K. So first of all, we would have 50 factorial divided by, and then once again, I'm going to use some color coding here just so we can keep track of everything. So if I put in pink this time, K factorial, and then in red, we're going to have 50 minus K factorial. And then this is still going to be multiplied by 
one on six to the power of number of successes, which is K for the bottom line, and then five on six to the power of the number of failures, which is 50 minus K. So that expression there was actually what we found in part A of this question. So our task now is just to simplify this. So I've color coded this so we can see where everything ends up. And at some points here, I'm actually gonna change slightly what these things look like. So the first thing we'll still have is our 50 factorial, which was up here in blue. And then instead of dividing a fraction by a fraction, which is what's happening with all of these factorials, what we'd prefer to do is multiply by the reciprocal. So if we just deal with the factorial part first of this problem, multiplying by the reciprocal will result in k factorial coming up to the top line. And then our 50 take k factorial would also come up to the top line, but I'm also going to change the way it looks slightly to allow us to simplify some things down. So 50 take k factorial is the same as 50 take k multiplied by 50 take k take one factorial. So that's a property of factorials that we can separate them out or expand them out. And then all of that is going to be still divided by, and it will be the bottom line here that was in the green and the orange. So we're gonna have k plus one factorial, which I'm going to change into k plus one times k factorial. So we'll just have k plus one times k factorial. And you can start to see here that the reason why I'm doing this is some of these terms on the denominator and the numerator will be able to cancel in a moment. We'll also have the 50 take k take one factorial, which is in the orange. So let me just write that down. We'll have our 50 minus k minus one factorial. And then as we've multiplied by the flipped fraction, we'll also have as our final bit on the bottom line of this new fraction, the 50 factorial that was just here in the line above. And next, just before we get to simplifying that fraction, we can see up above there's some index laws that can be applied to simplify this because on the top line and the bottom line we have 1 on 6 raised to the power of and on the top line we have k plus 1 and then to simplify this we can simply subtract away the power that's on the bottom line of the fraction. So that's just going to be minus k. In a similar way we're going to take our 5 divided by 6 which appears in the numerator and the denominator. And the power on the top line was 50 minus k minus one. And then we subtract away from that 50 minus k in a bracket, which actually turns into minus 50 and plus k. So now we're going to simplify as much as we can. So 50 factorial here and here could cancel because one's in the top of the fraction, one's in the bottom of the fraction. We can also cancel k factorial and k factorial and we can simplify 50 take k take one factorial on the bottom line with the 50 take k take one factorial in the top line of that fraction. Next, looking at the powers, we can see that k and negative k would cancel there. And we'd also have 50 and negative 50 cancelling as well as minus k and positive k cancelling there. So now that we've cancelled everything that will help simplify, we'll just be left with 50 minus k on the top line of that fraction and k plus one on the bottom line. And then that's going to be multiplied by one on six and all that's left is a power of one. And then that's multiplied by five on six and all that's left of its power is negative one. So we can still simplify that a little bit further. So we'd have 50 minus k divided by k plus one multiplied by one on six multiplied by, and the power of negative one here just means it's the reciprocal or flip fraction, so that's gonna be multiplied by six over five. And then once again, we can see there's some canceling that can happen with the six and the six. And now this is our final answer coming up, which matches what we were asked to show. So we'd have 50 take K times one on the top line, which is just 50 subtract K. And then that's going to be divided by just k plus one times five, which can be written as five bracket k plus one. So we can see that that's the answer that we were looking to show. So we're now done with part B of this question. And from the examiner's report that really just shows the solutions, they have essentially done the same thing as what we did on the previous slide. For part C, it says, hence or otherwise find the value of k for which the probability of w equals k is the greatest. 
Now the word hence means that we probably need to use the answer that we've just found or previous answers in the question depending on how many parts of a question there are. So we're going to use this ratio that we've just found in part B to help answer this problem. Now the other thing that we need to know for this question is how the probabilities of a binomial distribution work. So the best way I can think about this is using a graphical display just to get a sense of what we're looking for. So this is going to be the value of k and this is going to measure the probability that w equals k. For a binomial distribution, you'll have probabilities associated with every value of k, which in a previous part of this question was between 0 and 50. But what we're looking for is we're looking for the maximum value. So there'll be some probability that is a maximum value, and we're looking for that value of k. And to help find that, we know that there'll be smaller probabilities associated with the outcomes either side of that maximum point. So based on this ratio formula that we've created, what we're essentially looking for is we're looking for the probability of w equaling k plus 1, so the next probability. We want that divided by the previous probability, which is just w to equal k. We want that to be less than 1, because we want the next probability, which is this line here, to be less than the previous probability, which is going to be the maximum 1. That's what we're looking for. So that ratio needs to be less than 1 for us to find that spot on the graph. Next, we're going to replace the symbolic representation with our algebraic one. So that's the same as saying 50 minus k divided by 5 times k plus 1 is going to be less than 1. And then we can multiply both sides by 5 bracket k plus 1. So that means we want 50 minus k to be less than 5k plus 5. And I also just expanded out that bracket in, in that same step. And then if we get all the k's on one side, we're going to add k, and we're also going to subtract 5. So we reveal that 45 must be less than 6k. And then we can divide both sides by 6, and we find that 45 on 6 must be less than k. And another way of saying that is that k must be greater than 7.5. And that's what 45 on 6 is as a decimal, just so we can see the number that we're close to. So we're going to want to investigate numbers that are around 7 to 8 and see what happens with their ratios. And from there, we should be able to conclude what the k value is that gives the greatest probability. So I'm going to start by considering the case where k is equal to 7. So in terms of our ratio up here, we'd have the probability of w equals k plus 1 would become the probability that w is equal to 7 plus 1 is 8, divided by the probability of w equals k, which would now be the probability that w equals 7, because that's the value of k that we've selected to investigate first. And then in our formula, it would be 50 take k, which is going to be 50 take 7, divided by 5 times k plus 1. So that's going to be 5 times 7 plus 1. And then that is going to equal 43 on the top line. And then on the bottom line, we'd have 5 times 8, which is 40. And now that ratio is greater than 1. So 43 is greater than 40, meaning that fraction is greater than 1. So that means that the probability that w equals 8 must be greater than the probability of w equals 7. So to get a fraction that's greater than 1, the top line of that, which is the probability w equals 8, must be larger than the bottom of that fraction, which is the probability that w equals 7. So next up, we're going to consider the case where k is equal to 8. So that would give us the probability that w is equal to 9, because that's k plus 1 on the top line, divided by the probability that w is equal to 8, which is just the probability of w equaling k, where 8 is our choice for k in this case. So that is going to equal 50 minus k will be 50 minus 8 divided by 5 times k plus 1, which is 5 times 8 plus 1. Now evaluating that, we'd have 50 minus 8, which is 42, divided by 5 times 9, which is 45. And we can see that that fraction is less than 1. So to get a fraction that's less than 1, the top line must be smaller than the bottom line. 
So that gives us the probability that W equals nine must be less than the probability that W equals eight. So if we think about what this means for our graph, it means that the probability when K is seven is less than the probability when K equals eight, which is greater than when the probability was equal to nine. So we can see that K equals eight gives the greatest probability. So therefore K equals eight gives the greatest value for that probability. So that is the answer to part C of this question. So from the examiner's report, we can see they used a similar method to the one that was shown on the previous slide. And they also indicated that arguments made from the features of the binomial distribution was another way of tackling this problem, which is kind of what we were doing with the graph on the last slide.